this video, we're going to look at how to name type 3 binary compounds and also how to write the formulas based off of the name. You'll know that you're working with a type 3 compound if you have compounds that only involve nonmetals. We're focusing only on binary compounds, so compounds that would contain two nonmetals. If you remember from class, um, we have this staircase that goes across the periodic table. Basically, anything to the right of that staircase is considered a nonmetal. Obviously, we have the semi-metals that are involved in there, and the semi-metals will sometimes form type 3 compounds. The other compound or the other element that will also form type 3 compounds will be hydrogen, so kind of looking way over on the other side of the periodic table. Unlike ionic compounds, type 3 compounds are actually sharing electrons. So rather than, let's say, nitrogen and carbon stealing electrons away from each other, they are in a relationship where they will share their electrons so that both of them can have the octet um, fulfilled. That type of sharing relationship is called a covalent bond. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is how we name these. There's some special things that are involved in the actual naming. So one of the things that we're going to rely on is your knowledge or understanding of Greek prefixes. A lot of times you've been exposed to these in math classes, especially if you have already taken geometry, you'll have worked with these prefixes quite exclusively. Now in ninth grade, you're not expected to memorize everything, and I will give you these on the test. I'm more concerned with the fact that you can recognize a type 3 compound when you come across one, and I'm also um, hoping that you are able to use the information from this chart then to write formulas based off of the names, and then also if you have a compound, be able to write the name from the formula that has been given to you. We're going to begin by writing the chemical formulas for some very common compounds that you would be familiar with. So we'll start with carbon monoxide. The first element, if there's only one of that atom represented in the formula, you just state the element's name. So in this case, carbon is telling us there's only one. So we just write a C. And then the prefix for the second one will tell us how many of the second we have. So monoxide, I only have one oxygen. And therefore, carbon monoxide would simply be just CO. In our next one, carbon dioxide, again, there's no prefix in front of the carbon, which indicates that there is only one of that atom present. Dioxide, the prefix di, di represents two. So that's telling us that we have two oxygens, O2. So carbon dioxide is CO2. The next one is one of my favorite molecules. I couldn't live without this one, dihydrogen monoxide. Now we have a prefix in front of our first element, which is telling us that we must have multiple of that present. How many we have? Well, there's two. The prefix di means two, so H, two. And then looking at our second element, mono again. So monoxide means we have one oxygen, H2O. All right, we're gonna go with a couple more examples here. So phosphorus trichloride. Again, there's no prefix in front of the phosphorus, so it tells us we have one phosphorus. And tri, if we check our chart, means three, so it has three chlorines. PCl3 is phosphorus trichloride. Dicarbon hexahydride. So it's telling us that we have two carbons. Hydride is the version of hydrogen. So we just took off the O-G-E-N and added on the IDE, so this is hydrogen. Hexa refers to six, so it means that we have six hydrogens. So C2H6. You might be tempted at this time to simplify these subscripts because they are both divisible by two. We don't simplify when using type three nomenclature. The reason that is, is we are no longer putting things together based on their charges. 
Um, and if we were to simplify that, it would no longer be the compound that actually exists, but um, a different version of that compound. And that is more advanced chemistry than we are learning in ninth grade right now. So the last one we're going to do an example of is dinitrogen pentoxide. So again, that prefix di means 2, N2, two, and penta is 5, so oxygen has 5, N2O5. One little trick to remember whenever you're using oxygen or more commonly known as oxide when writing these formulas is that if you have a prefix that ends in an O or an A, that that prefix is dropped as it is added to the oxide. For example, we don't write monoxide. We just write monoxide. We don't write something like penta oxide, we write pentoxide. So again, the O and the A's are commonly dropped when they are put in front of the oxide. Just one little trick to remember. All right, now let's take a look at some examples where you are going to be writing the names based off of the compound formula. Again, the biggest thing to remember is that the number of atoms is then the prefix for that particular atom. Looking at number two, we have carbon. There's only one carbon. When it's the first element and there's only one, we never use the prefix mono. So we're just going to write carbon as the name there. And then we have to take a look at how many hydrogens do we have? We have four hydrogens. And the prefix for four is tetra. So we'll write tetra. And then hydrogen changes to hydride. So it would be tetrahydride. The common name for that is methane, but we won't be using common names at this time. All right, moving on to the next one. We have two borons. So we would say diboron. Notice that you do nothing to change the ending of that nonmetal. And then we have six hydrogens. Again, we look at our prefixes, and six is hexa. So we just say hexahydride. Let's jump down to this one, um, number five. It's the one with the sulfur. So again, we have one sulfur, so we'll just say sulfur. We will not write monosulfur. That's not a thing. Um, and then the fluorine, there's six of them. Again, the prefix for six is hexa, so we'll say hexa. And fluorine changes to fluoride. Now that you know a little bit more on how to name and write compound formulas for type 3 binary compounds, pause the video here and check to see if you can do these on your own. When you're done, unpause the video and check your answers. All right, how'd you do? Phosphorus pentabromide should be PBr5. Nitrogen trihydride is NH3. Tetrophosphorus decoxide P4O10. Disulfur dichloride S2Cl2. Carbon tetrachloride CCl4. SO2 was sulfur dioxide. NO2 is nitrogen dioxide. CF4 carbon tetrafluoride. XEF6, xenon hexafluoride, and finally BF3, boron trifluoride. With practice, these are probably the easiest of all of the ones to name and write formulas from, because as long as you understand that the prefix tells you how many atoms of each element you have, and that it has nothing to do with charges, this is actually a lot less complicated than anything we've done up till this point. Good luck, and again, Practice makes it easier.